Hello, I'm Connell. And I'm Ryan. And today I'm really excited because we're talking all about reptiles and amphibians. And BC is home to a wide range of incredible and misunderstood reptile and amphibian species. They're found right across the province and sometimes in places that you wouldn't expect. I've loved reptiles for as long as I can remember. And I think what draws me to them and what fascinates me most about them is how they continually surprise me with the places that they exist and inhabit and also the amazing adaptations they've developed to thrive all over the world. Today, I've come to this coastal grassland to look for garter snakes. So I've just been looking around this grassland area, seeing if I can find any snakes. And when I was walking along the cliff, I saw one just head down towards the beach. So we're gonna go down there and see if we can find out what it's up to. Wow, I honestly can't believe what I'm seeing right now. These snakes are swimming into the water. You know, they come down from the grasslands up above, across the beach, over the kelp, and into the ocean. And they're diving and kind of slinking and slithering their way through the kelp beds. And they're, they're actually really beautiful swimmers. It's incredible to see. They're holding their breath for up to a number of minutes at a time before they're poking their heads back up above water to take stock of what's around them and get prepared to dive again. Although landlocked populations of garter snakes are known to hunt in freshwater, relatively little is known about their coastal counterparts. But this kelp foraging behavior does seem to be unique to garter snakes that live along the Salish Sea. When you see a snake flicking their tongue like this, they are essentially tasting the air. Garter snakes have poor eyesight and rely heavily on their excellent senses of taste and smell to navigate, locate prey, and identify possible predators. When they catch a fish, like this gunnel, they bring it out of the water and their mildly venomous saliva helps to paralyze their prey before swallowing it whole. Their bottom jaws are separated into two halves so they can even swallow prey larger than their own heads, like this one. So it's pretty late in the afternoon now and I've spent all day chasing snakes around the intertidal zone on this beach. For me, life doesn't really get any better than this. I would have been totally satisfied just hanging out, watching them swim in the kelp beds all day. But to be able to witness hunting behavior from a species that isn't known to typically hunt in saltwater environments was really, really cool and something that I'll never forget. So one of the most common reptile species that we have here on southern Vancouver Island is the European wall lizard. And on a hot day like today, we're seeing them all over the place. As the name suggests, European wall lizards aren't native here in BC. They're an invasive species whose population has exploded across this part of Vancouver Island. Although their true impact on the ecosystem has not been well studied, invasive species do often have serious consequences on native reptiles and amphibians. We see this with other species, from bullfrogs to red-eared slider turtles, which often came from released pets. So just because they're a non-native species doesn't mean we can't appreciate them. I absolutely love seeing them hunting, where they dart around after insects. They're so, so fast. We just need to make sure that we don't release any more non-native species into the environment. Now that we've shown you two reptiles, we're going to show you two amphibian species that are native to BC. Hey Ryan. Yeah. Can you tell us the difference between amphibians and reptiles? Definitely. So the way that I like to remember the difference between amphibians and reptiles are that amphibians are slimy and reptiles are scaly. Also, amphibians are born with gills, whereas reptiles are born with lungs. But as expected with nature, there are some exceptions to this rule. I found one. This adorable little critter is the Western Redback Salamander. Now while the majority of amphibians lay eggs in water, these little rule breakers lay their eggs on the forest floor. 
This makes them truly terrestrial, spending their whole lives on land. They lay their eggs in kind of like little nests, which they bury and hide. Western redback salamanders are found on forested slopes of Vancouver Island and the lower mainland of BC. They're most active in wet weather and love eating everything from spiders to worms. They even communicate with each other through scent markings. So if they want to know if another salamander's using their log, well, they just give it a sniff. These salamanders are absolutely prolific in this forest. We found over 20 of them in just a couple of hours of searching, which I wasn't expecting at all. I also wasn't expecting them to be so cute. Individuals find moist microhabitats to hang out in, something like this. So they do this in order to maintain hydration, which is essential for absorbing oxygen through their skin. All amphibians are what we call indicator species. This means that they are particularly sensitive to environmental change, and a decrease in their population can warn us of potential concerns in their ecosystems. There are 10 species of frog in BC, but only two of them are tree frogs. The most common tree frog in BC is the Pacific tree frog. They grow to a maximum of five centimeters long and are camouflage experts, so don't worry if you've never seen one. Pacific tree frogs are able to change the color of their skin, and the possibilities range from a dull brown to a bright green. The color change is caused by variations in temperature and humidity, and the frogs have no control over the change. My favorite thing about these frogs is their feet. They have little sticky pads on each toe to allow them to efficiently climb on just about any surface in the forest. So Connell, this has been quite different than your usual birding adventures. What have you thought of it? I am fully converted. I absolutely love the reptiles and the amphibians. I hadn't expected this to be as amazing as it was. And yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit obsessed with them now. Yeah, and to think like we've only scratched the surface. I kind of want to keep going and looking for more. I'm gonna go find more. See you later. Finish the video. <laughs>